Hi, I'm High and Mighty Joe, and this is my lovely wife, Cat. And we've enjoyed doing these vlogs for you, but this is a special vlog right now. We'd like to take a minute to tell you a story about a young man named Ryan White who had AIDS. Ryan White was a young man who had AIDS that he got through a blood transfusion. And the way the school systems and the community treated him were horrible. He shouldn't have been treated like that. So we ask you to stay tuned and please enjoy the vlog. Ryan White was born at St. Joseph Memorial Hospital in Kokomo, Indiana to Hubert Wayne and Jean Elaine Hale White. Jeannie, sorry, Elaine Hale White. When he was circumcised, the bleeding would not stop. When he was three days old, doctors diagnosed him with severe hemophilia A and a hereditary coagulation disorder associated with the X chromosome, which causes even minor injuries to result in severe bleeding. For treatment, he received weekly infusions of factor eight, a blood product created from pooled plasma of non-hemophiliacs and increasingly common treatment for hemophiliacs at the time. Healthy for most of his childhood, he became extremely ill with pneumonia in December 1984. On December 17th, during a lung biopsy, Ryan was diagnosed with AIDS. By this, by this time, the scientific community had studied the epidemic in great detail earlier that year that HTLV-3 was identified and isolated by American research scientists, confirming work done by French, re French research scientists who called it LAV. A lengthy public battle to determine who should be recognized as the discover of the human retrovirus delayed development of a test for what would later be called HIV. Ryan apparently received a contaminated treatment of factor eight that was infected with HIV, as did thousands of other Americans with hemophilia and hemophiliacs around the world at the same time because the retrovirus that causes AIDS had been recently identified, much of the pooled Factor 8 concentrate was tainted. Blood banks and pharmaceuticals dismissed calls by the CDC to use a hepatitis B test as a surrogate until a HIV test could be developed. Late plasma products were screened and heat treated to deactivate both HIV and hepatitis. Among, among hemophiliacs treated with the blood clotting factors between 1979 and 1984, Nearly 90% became affected, infected with HIV and or hepatitis C. At the time of his diagnosis, his T-cell count had dropped to 25. A healthy individual without HIV will have around 500 to 1,200. Doctors predicted Ryan White had only six months to live. This is the home of Ryan White when he lived here in Kokomo, Indiana. He lived here with his mother and his sister, Andrea. This is the house that he lived in when he was diagnosed with AIDS. And right there is the famous shot. This is the what the building looks like now. This is the famous shot of Ryan standing out with all the people, the Western administration and uh, his lawyers and uh, when he was denied access to school right there and I will show you that picture now.
Western Middle School in Rusheville faced enormous pressure from many parents and faculty to deny White from the campus after his diagnosis became widely known. In the school of 360 total students, 117 parents and 50 teachers signed a petition encouraging school leaders to ban Ryan from school. Due to the widespread fear and ignorance of AIDS, the principal later and later the school board succumbed to this pressure and prohibited readmittance. The White family filed a lawsuit seeking to overturn the decision. The Whites initially filed a lawsuit in the U.S. District Court in Indianapolis. The court, however, declined to hear the case until administrative appeals had been resolved. On November 25th, an Indiana Department of Education officer ruled that the school must follow the Indiana Board of Health guidelines and that White, Ryan White must be allowed to attend school. The means of transmission of HIV had not yet been fully resolved by the mid to late 1980s. Scientists knew it spread via blood and was not transmittable by any sort of casual contact, but as recently as 1983, the American Medical Association had thought that, had thought evidence suggests household contact may transmit AIDS and the belief that the disease could easily spread persisted. Children with AIDS were still rare. At the time of Ryan's, Ryan White's rejection from school, the Centers for Disease Control knew of only 148 cases of pediatric AIDS in the United States. Many families in Kokomo believed his presence posed an unacceptable risk. When Ryan was permitted to return to school for one day in February 1986, 151 of 360 students stayed home. He also worked as a paperboy, and many of the people on his route canceled their subscriptions, believing that HIV could be transmitted through the newsprint. The Indiana State Health Commissioner, Dr. Woodrow Myers, who had extensive experience treating AIDS patients in San Francisco and the Centers for Disease Control both notified the board that Ryan posed no risk to other students, but the school board and many parents ignored their statements. In February 1986, the New England Journal of Medicine published a study of 101 people who had spent three months living in close but non-sexual contact with people with AIDS. The study concluded that the risk of infection was minimal to non-existent. Even when contact included sharing toothbrushes, razors, clothing, comb, and drinking glasses, sleeping in the same bed, and hugging and kissing. When Ryan was finally readmitted in April, a group of families withdrew their children and started an alternate, alternative school. Threats of violence and lawsuits persisted. According to Ryan's mother, people on the street would often yell, We know you're queer at Ryan. The editors and publishers of the Kokomo Tribune, which supported Ryan both editorially and financially, were also ridiculed by members of the community and threatened with death for their actions. And as you can see, we are now in the town of Cicero, Indiana. This is the... Continue on Main Street for a half mile. Thank you, Susie. This is the... Town. Uh, as you can see, you see my lovely wife over there in the captain's seat. Um, this is the lovely uh, town of Cicero. This is where Ryan White moved with his family um, after the whole ordeal. Um, take a gander at that. Isn't that beautiful? That is gorgeous. Uh, but this is uh, this is the this is the way um, to his house, uh, and we just passed the cemetery cemetery where we will be going back to uh, a little bit later on, and um, so um, stay tuned. Well, we have finally made it, and uh, after a long trek and. Uh, and uh, tiresome journey. Here we are. This is the 
the home of uh, Ryan White when he was still living. This is his home. Uh, his bedroom was right there above the garage. Uh, that was his room. Um, this is just, it, it's, it's magnificent to know that, uh, right before he died that he got to live in, in such a wonderful, nice big house, uh, and, and from, and from what we've been told, his mother still lives here, um, with her, with her husband, and, uh, so, uh, and that, that, at least that was a couple of years ago that she still did, and, uh, so, yes, yeah, just, uh, just a nice, beautiful house, and, uh, and, uh, but, uh, just, just another, another great look at, uh, at such a wonderful home, and, and, uh, a place where Ryan lived out his last days, and, um, uh, right there in that very room, right there, so, let's see. That, that's the room right above the garage. So, uh, as you can see here, there's. So it sounds like some construction uh, going on, yard work or something in the back. Possibly, it looks like it's starting to rain. Uh, but we are under these this this wonderful tree right here that's right in front of their house. Uh, so beautiful. And here we are at Hamilton Heights High School. And as you can see, there's the entrance. It says, Welcome visitors. This is Hamilton Heights High School. And this is where a young Ryan White finally found acceptance. Um, the, the, the people of this school, they, they accepted him. Uh, the town accepted him. They, they wanted him. Um, they cared for him. Uh, and they treated him like they were like he was one of their own and um, This is this is Hamilton Heights High School as you can see. This is the parking lot um, Of course in the in the my wife in the captain's chair um, But it's just uh, a, a, a great place apparently to go to school uh, at least it was for Ryan um, As you can see there's a, a shot right there uh, just tremendous shot of the building just uh, apparently another entrance down here just I wanted to uh, let you guys see what we see uh, as top vloggers you know so um, as, as my wife continues you can see the looks like football field and bleacher area as well um, he may have went to a game here. Um, played tennis on those courts. Um, he may, he may, he may have done those things as well. So, it just uh, here's a, here's a back shot of the school. Um, looks like they're possibly got some things going on. Um, so, for those of you who do not know, the Hamilton Heights are known as the Huskies. And you'll find that coming up. There you go, Hamilton Heights Huskies. So that's what they are known as. Uh, looks like they may have doing a little construction here in the back. And I wanted to thank you guys so much for tuning in to this vlog and checking this out. And uh, we, it really means a lot to us that you guys are, uh, you know, leave your questions, your comments, your comments uh, in the uh, in the box down there. You know where the box is down there and uh we'll go ahead and um we'll go ahead and answer as many of those as we on possibly March 29, can 1990 ryan white entered riley hospital for children in indianapolis with a respiratory infection as his condition deteriorated he was placed on a ventilator and sedated he was visited by elton john and the hospital was divulged with calls from well-wishers ryan white died on april 8 1990. Over 1,500 people attended Ryan's funeral on April 11th, a standing room only event held at the Second Presbyterian Church on Meridian Street in Indianapolis. White's pallbearers included Elton John, football star Howie Long, and Phil Donahue.
Elton John performed the Skyline Pigeon at the funeral. The funeral was also attended by Michael Jackson and Barbara Bush. On the day of the funeral, former President Ronald Reagan wrote a tribute to Ryan that appeared in the Washington Post. Reagan's statement about AIDS and White's funeral were seen as indicators of how greatly White, Ryan White had helped change perceptions of AIDS. And this is the room that held the services for Ryan White. So over 1,500 people attended the services. Right here. Ryan White is buried in Cicero, close to the former home of his mother in the year following his death. His grave was vandalized on four occasions as time passed, Ryan's grave became a shrine for his admirers. The Ryan White final resting place. A kid of courage. He sure was a kid of courage. Um gonna make a difference gonna make it right friends forever Michael Jackson and uh, as you can see uh, looks like patience tolerance faith love forgiveness wisdom and spirit turn me loose from your hands let me fly to distant lands Fly away, skyline pigeon, fly from all the things you left so very far behind. Love, Elton John. A beautiful flag flying right above. And as you can see, it's not too far from the road. It's not really too far from the road either. So, I mean, you just you're just you're just a little bit ways down from the road. So. If you if you happen to just pass by the cemetery and and you happen to look, you you could probably see it from the road. Um, but there it is. It's just just another another great thing. And from what I'm told, there's even a tribute right here on the back. A tribute to Ryan. I don't know if you can see that.